Welcome back, everyone. And if this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Dark Hour 717. And this is where we're going to go over the latest in news and information from the Star Citizen universe. This week has definitely been a slower week, though still a number of items to cover. From patch 318 in the PTU, the live patch on 317.5, Siege of Orson, and the Daymar Rally, we have a number of things to discuss. Before we get into it, though, if you do enjoy these updates, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. It does really help get the video out to more people. And if you've already subscribed, I just want to say thank you. Also, stick around till the end of the video to see how you can get entered in for a chance to win an Anvil CAR Pisces Rescue with the code blue paint. As we continue testing the 318 PTU patch, we do find that it's still not quite in a state that would be acceptable for a live release. With a lot of work to be done and refinement needed, we did see that the patch launched to the PTU on the 19th had a warning that the patch itself had issues in the build and that it may not make it through the night. Though with another patch coming two days later, it seems to have held with no major issues. This newest patch was released with notes that show with a much smaller known issue list, which includes issues related to salvaging and areas of the hull not being salvaged properly, especially on the C2 Hercules and Anvil Carrick. Also, there were ship storing issues at a non-home base planet, resulting in the ships being locked in a transferring to storage state. Also, fully loaded C2s at Area 18 are causing slow frame rates and crashing, as well as ongoing issues with losing gear when a player dies in an armistice zone. These are just a few of the more severe items, but a full list is accessible from the link in the description. Patch 318, though, has been working better and better with each patch. Even though Patch Yankee, which was the one released on the 19th, was slated to not even possibly make it through the night, it did, and we moved on to Patch Zulu. And that's currently what we're operating on. But not only have we moved to that on the PTU, but in the live servers, we are now on Patch 317.5, which released on Wednesday. This, of course, is the live patch that was released for the purpose of bringing the Lunar New Year Festival, or Red Festival, to the live server, as well as another running of the Siege of Orison. The Siege of Orison is going to be running from the 20th of January through the 30th of January. This, of course, is the massive FPS dynamic event that runs through the multi-platformed area of Orison. Siege of Orison is the first and extremely fun FPS dynamic event in Star Citizen. Unlike Jump Town, which is strictly PvP, this brings PvE FPS missions to Orison. The goal of the event is to make your way over to Solanke platform, and this is of course done by accepting the mission from Commander Dooley in your Moby Glass and departing from the top of the Crusader building in Orison. Once on Solanke, you need to make your way to the admin center through three platforms, taking out several enemies and also lieutenants to get their data pad to shut down the IFF transmitters to open up the airspace. Once on the admin center, you fight your way to the barge where the Ninetales leader, Mendo Ren, is located, and you must take him down and shut down the final IFF beacon to shut down all of their operations, after which you have a limited time to get out and vacate the area. With a large AUEC payout, this is an amazing and fun event. Of course, with patch 318 right around the corner, which includes a wipe, the earning potential is not the main focus, but it is the fun and enjoyment of the event that is the key thing. If you never experienced this, I highly recommend you do so, and a link to a video breaking down the event itself is in the description, as well as a link to the RSI event briefing. Of course, with the Siege, we see an available ship sale in support of the event, and that's going to go on with the Hercules A2, C2, Ares Ion, Ares Inferno, the Buccaneer, Corsair, Hammerhead, Pisces, Cyclone MT, and Spartan all for sale. This is the time to grab cross chassis upgrades to these sometimes limited ships. As the Siege event is not the only sale event going on, we also see the Red Festival kicking off on this past Friday. With the Red Festival, we see the celebration of the Lunar New Year, with this being the Year of the Rooster. At launch, a gift of the Rooster statues was given by CAG, which a link in the description is available to claim yours. We also see that the Red Envelopes return, which you can collect around the verse and turn in for AUEC as well as a Lunar New Year screenshot contest, and finally, the special event, Red Paint. This year, you can pick up not only the newest Red Festival paints with the gold accents for the Pisces and the Carrick, but you can also pick up the past paints for the Freelancer, the Nomad, the Connie, and the Saber, all with accents to show off the animal each represents. On top of the paints, the sales of ships include C8X and C8R Pisces, the RSI Constellation, Andromeda, Aquila, and Taurus, the Hornet Wildfire, and Super Hornet, and all the Freelancer variants, 
And of course, the Hurricane, the Hawk, the Nomad, the Terrapin, the Saber, the Valkyrie, and of course, the Gladiator. Again, a large number of ships that go on sale for limited times each year are now available for pledge or cross chassis upgrade. And with Red Festival, there is even a Warbond upgrade available that will save you 25 US dollars on a cross chassis upgrade for the Anvil Valkyrie. Check out all these ships for sale on the Red Festival page or through the Pledge Store. We also saw this week the Star Citizen Monthly Report released to the RSI website that details work done in the PU over the course of November and December. This of course goes into detail the work put into the PU as a retrospective and details items by department and team that worked on the development of the game. This is an extensive report that covers a number of items that we see covered through smaller single reports and highlights such as Star Citizen Live or Inside Star Citizen, but with much more detail. The Squadron 42 monthly report for the same time period was released via email to all backers, but this will actually show up on the RSI website this coming Wednesday, so keep an eye out for that. I definitely recommend reading both if you're interested in the development of the game as it is always chock full of in-depth information. A link to the PU report will be located in the description. Of course, with no inside Star Citizen, Star Citizen Live, or Roadmap Roundup this week, we do see the top racing event in the Star Citizen universe take place on the 21st of January, the Daymar Rally. Put on by Atmo Esports, this massive cross moon race going from Shubin Mining SCD1 to Eager Flats and then on to Kudra Ore is Star Citizen's most popular and epic community event put on by Atmo Esports. This year, with more participants than ever, we see 214 teams make the trek in hover bikes, buggies, and large trucks. Many not finishing the harrowing race, but many making the journey and completing it with at least one of their four teammates still standing. So due to technical difficulties, the leaderboards throughout the event were not functioning. We will have to wait for the final results from Atmo Esports. Determining the final results will likely take till at least Monday. Rocks Fang did participate with two teams, one operating in the Hover Quad Division and another in the Buggy Division. The overall experience was amazing. A full rundown of the event will be done on the channel once we have the final results. As for the server completions, the Hoverbike team consisting of myself, Flex4218, H3D, and Lawn Dart finished second on the server, and with a buggy team consisting of Gravity Cat, Anroll, Jscale, and Vumic, they placed third on their server after a number of complications. I do want to congratulate all the org members on an epic finish and a well-run race. Along with that, I want to congratulate all Daymar Rally racers and thank them for their participation in making this a fun and extremely exciting event and also thank Atmo Esports for running an unbelievable event as always. Definitely recommend checking out the VOD on the Twitch channel, a link is going to be in the description. The overall performance of the Daymar Rally though was a sign of the reliability that we're seeing with 317.5. The event was ran across several servers, though in the two servers we were on there was desync issues as well as some other minor issues, but overall the server performance was excellent with no 30Ks for either of our teams and with all the participants crowding the starting line, the performance kept up with minimal lag. With a start that was actually done across several comms channel on Discord, there was a bit of a mix up at the start of the race, but overall would not affect anything as far as results. Main vehicles did collide in the beginning and reduce the pack down as teams would need to take time to relaunch. Through the course of the race, they saw additional teams fall due to pirating as well as other aggressors or even failure of their own vehicles as cyclones were subject to the cooler issues, Hover bikes exploded on rocks and other obstructions and trucks were shot and destroyed by competitors. The race itself was a well-run event and carried out with the utmost professionalism, as is all Atmos Esports events. As I mentioned, we are still waiting for the official results, but as soon as we have those, we'll pass it along. And that is about it this week for updates. Again, keep an eye out for final results of the Daymar Rally. But other than that, I hope you found this update useful. Leave me a comment, let me know your thoughts, or even tell me if you caught the race and what was your favorite moment. Make sure to get your entries in for the giveaway of the Anvil C8R Pisces with the code blue paint. Just subscribe here, comment on any video. You can also get a second entry by heading over to the Twitch channel and give a follow over there. Winner is going to be drawn on 1st of February, so keep an eye on your notifications. If you would like to help support the channel, check out the merch store or even hit the join button above for a membership. All of that goes right back into the giveaways to the community. I do want to say thank you for checking out the update and please be safe out there and we will catch you in the verse.